we're seeing more and more evidence that there is tremendous power in having strong African-American and Latino leaders in our schools. Good to see you, brother. The bottom line is one must be very intentional in how you develop, how you acquire, and how you retain those underrepresented populations. Thurman, how are you doing? One of my quotes is like, people need to see their God. In that sense, they need to see their likeness in the people that are in places of um, authority. Chicago, hometown of President Obama, the ultimate role model for all aspiring black Americans. His achievement has galvanized the nation nowhere more than the Windy City, which has the second largest African-American population in the US. The majority live on Chicago's south side, a mainly poor disadvantaged area. Among young black men, 45% are unemployed and the leading cause of death is homicide. Chicago's public schools have a major problem. Over half of all black male students drop out of high school. There are 30% more black males in prison than in college. Developing outstanding leadership, representative of the school population, is seen as the key to overcoming these statistics. I grew up in this neighborhood. I grew up on the south side of Chicago, and I was lucky to end up in some schools that provided a better quality education than most of the other elementary public schools on the South Side. Shane Evans is a principal at a secondary school on the South Side. He's one of the new type of school leader that the city is seeking to recruit. We all need role models. Great teachers and great leaders can come from any community, any ethnicity, any socioeconomic background, no question. But there is something powerful about when a young man sees someone who comes from his neighborhood, or a young man sees someone who might not come from the neighborhood but shares their experiences, or at least share some adversity, or can understand or have some cultural competence, I think it makes a difference. It's an added benefit. I think it's important to have representative leadership in schools, uh, first and foremost, uh, because it shows an appreciation for, a respect for one's culture. What's up, Harari? Uh, wash your hands. Oh, you're always going to gym. Whenever I ask you what's up, you're, oh, I'm going to gym. I think when individuals who are in a leadership capacity, it does an enormous amount towards uh, boosting the self-esteem of those young people in that school community. Secondly, I think individuals who may aspire to those positions need to know that there are some real opportunities that exist for them. The barriers facing aspiring black and Hispanic leaders, particularly African-American males like Shane, are numerous. Lack of training and recruitment, the costs involved, the selection process, and above all, the quality of education. All right, young lady. Right, so good. Uh, School up. often hasn't been a welcoming place to African-American young men. If people seem to not respect your culture in the school, then why would you want to put yourself through that? And if you don't want to do that, then how can you go to high school and do well? How can you then challenge yourself to go to college, to leave your community, to be maybe the first in your family, to do some of the things that would be necessary to see success in the academic arena? If you're an African-American boy, two and a half percent will have a four-year college degree by the time they're 25. That's beyond broken on some level. If one in 40 black boys in Chicago are getting through college. So that's the first obstacle. The first obstacle is the quality of schooling. Various strategies are being developed to remove other barriers like access to training and recruitment. Let me say this first. The strongest comments come with an I statement. Who knows what I mean by that? Yes, I... Joseph Schofner is now an aspiring principal at a largely Hispanic elementary school. A high school teacher for 16 years, he had never thought of becoming a school leader. I came from a family of educators. My mother was a, was a teacher. Um, my mother was also a principal. Um, but I never saw myself in that role um, because I never saw uh, African-American males in, in that role. And the reason is because you're speaking from whose perspective? 
from, from your own. So For uh, African-American males, the training and support that would help support one's ability to really be a successful leader was lacking. I think that you have to be very intentional and you have to be very proactive. There has not been a focus on any sustained effort to recruit, train, and support so that those individuals could succeed. <laughs> oh, two high five. Joseph's former supervisor recommended him for Launch, a leadership program which is targeted at underrepresented groups. Take turns, take turns. Another barrier to principal training is money. It can cost thirty to fifty thousand dollars. Crucially, Joseph's course is subsidized. What this program was able to do was to relieve me of my responsibilities in the classroom, allow me to focus on the responsibilities that would be involved in being a principal, focus on that learning component, and then produce somebody who was able to address the challenges that, that were inherent in that role. If you need leaders, it's like anything else. You have to invest in order to get them. It's one of the things that you do with student principalship mm -hmm. is, is to make sure that, that you're constantly giving teachers they've written the oral feedback just as we've been doing since the beginning of the year. Mm -hmm. As part of his leadership development, Joseph receives mentoring from the current principal. The program also helps him prepare for the principal selection process. You're trying to get some people to see something they haven't seen before. And when people um, make choices, quite often they're looking for someone that looks like them. Um, and they can't see someone else in front, in front of their children or directing their school that they don't think they can relate to one-on-one -on -one or that seems so different than what they believe a principal should look like. Being able to help a council visualize you in that role is a critical skill that you need. To tackle the barriers of quality education and the lack of leadership candidates, the University of Chicago's Urban Education Institute aims to create a new model for urban schools. Central to that is developing a new type of school leadership, a school director who is primarily instructional rather than administrative. Our view is that leaders need to be extraordinary instructional leaders, they need to be to use the English term, they need to be really, they need to be head teachers and they need to be able to coach and develop and mentor their faculties in very explicit ways. But because our schools that we operate are located on the south side of Chicago and serve poor African American children, we've also put a premium on finding extraordinary African American leaders. And, and that's very intentional, it's very explicit, we believe that that matters. Um, uh, for, for in a number of dimensions. The university has set up four charter schools similar to academies in the UK. If you're really serious about recruiting pe good people for this job, they're there. They may not emerge through the traditional pipelines. We're in a privileged position of operating charter schools, which has a lot more flexibility over who comes in the front door. And so the kinds of questions we ask teachers are not, can you show us your resume with your qualifications and your certification? They are, when you faced adversity, what have you done about it? What do you believe is possible for these children? Tanika Island-Smith is one of Tim Knowles' protégés. Now director of a charter elementary school, she was teaching in a successful suburban school when Tim spotted her. What did you make today? I made my picture of my mama. My experience is the people who aspire to be school leaders often are not the right people to be school leaders. The people who, who really are deeply passionate about the work of the classroom have to be dragged, kicking and screaming. Nyla's going to share, guys. If there was one job I knew that I didn't want, it was the job of becoming a principal or a director of a school. And I was adamant about that for years. Um, I really enjoyed working with teachers and supporting teachers, coaching teachers, giving feedback. But I didn't want the level of, in my mind, of administrative year that came with becoming an administrator. But I, I came to learn that I really had a warped perception of what the role is and probably 
a perception of a job that actually did exist at one point, but that we're trying to move away from. That perception changed when Tanika shadowed another school director for a year. As school directors, your primary role is to be the instructional leader of the building. You know, you will have an operations manager that manages the budget. You will have an office manager that handles a lot of the paperwork for you. We want you to focus on empowering teachers, making sure the instruction is aligned and that the kids are being taught well. Who can explain to me what an inference okay. is? Uh, some of your own thinking into it. Mm. You're putting some of your own thinking into it. And why is that necessary? Because sometimes um, in the text, it doesn't always come right out and say mm -hmm. it. So you have to use a little bit of what you know and add it to what you read? Yes. Our school is very different from typical schools in the sense that our teachers work an extended day um, from 8 to 4.30. Um, we have professional development three to four times a week sometimes. So you know when you come to this place that you're making a commitment um, to be a learner. Uh, we know that our practice is public, which is not the case in most um, typical schools. Teachers are islands unto themselves and don't get in and out of each other's classrooms. Hi. Both groups that I chatted with, right on the mark. Great. Everyone could define what an inference was. Everyone could give an example of the fact and an inference mm -hmm. and talk extensively about it. It was good. Great. It was a good check-in. Thank you. Here we know that the goal is to push each other and to be a presence in each other's rooms and to give you know, constant and critical feedback and positive feedback as well. So you know you are attracting teachers that want to become experts at what they do. Ready? Yes. The scientific names of those boys. Tanika's goal is to groom others for leadership roles. So we have a phenomenal math teacher um, who knows that she's a really good teacher but is very shy. So I have been coercing her, her <laughs> into the limelight um, in the building. I think that she knows and thinks that I'm smart. Um, and sometimes we don't feel smart in everything that we set ourselves out to do, but I just really believe that she believes in me. When you asked, I was just like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, I can't do this, I can't do this. And you're like, yes, you can, yes, you can, you can do this, you know, the potential is there. And so it was just a really big push for me. The support was there from you whenever we needed something. Uh, Tina and I, we could always come and talk to you. And that really, really, really empowered me. I believe that as an African American, that relationships are actually built off of trust. And when you, trust someone that then um, you then allow that individual that you're trusting to empower you because you believe that they have your best interest at heart. You're just steadily pushing and so that's great and I feel like I can do anything and I tell you that you just make me feel like I can do anything. I do. I do. Oh. You're an expert and you're an outstanding teacher. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. It's not on tape, is it? Okay. <laughs>Developing African-American male leaders within school is Jared Washington's mission. He is director of another of the University of Chicago's charter schools. His own career began in a predominantly white area. 7.55. I became a teacher there in Normal, Illinois. And normal is normal. Um, in terms of America. It's, it's not a very diverse place. I walked into a school where I was the first African-American teacher. Um, in a district of 600 teachers, there were six African-Americans. Prove by your efforts every day to all that we are rising. And farming, trade, and literature ain't people enterprising. Jared left normal for the South Side. He wanted to give something back to his own community. Our churches, schools, and home life pure. Tell the world we're rising. Thank you. Most principals haven't been trained to be instructional leaders or to be leaders, period. They've been trained to be managers and supervisors, you know, and facility caretakers and planners. But what about the teaching and learning? And in these communities, I think the deal is this. It's most needed here. 
you can't get away with being a good manager here um, in Chicago on the South Side when you have schools where three out of 10 kids aren't meeting the state standard. I don't think you have to be black, but I think you have to understand the condition of our schools, the condition of our community, the history of the community, to be able to talk to people meaningfully, to build relationships, to build trust. As an instructional principal, one of Jared's aims is to grow his own leaders, but first he has to find them. There's supposed to be a scarcity of African-American males who are ready, educated, um, and able to work in these schools and, and do, do great things. And I think part of that determination depends on who's sitting on the other side of the interview table. Because we have to own the fact that there are certain ingrained stereotypes, there are certain messages, such as the message I just said, oh, there's no black men teachers, or oh, the majority of black men are in prison. These are messages that we get. So when an African-American male walks through the door, there's a bag of stereotypes trailing with him. We have to move beyond sort of the traditional pools of folk. But then what are the other avenues that are available to you for recruiting? The most valuable avenue that I've found is reaching out through the teachers that exist here. It's easy to cast that net at the job fair and say, oh, there were none. I didn't see any African-American candidates. Exactly. But where else did you look? What is the objective of our career unit? Right question down. Yes. As at Tanika's school, everyone's classroom is public. Of our career unit? So, Mr. Lowe, do you want a certain number of things, or do you want them to identify two or three specific things? Uh, two or three specific things would be great. Jared regularly observes lessons, models teaching, and gives feedback. I think my role is to demonstrate the direct opposite of what people believe, is that no, leadership can be taught, leadership can be cultivated. The lesson that we're gonna watch um, is uh, actually from 6 to 16. Um, Mr. Peter Gooden, he teaches the high school and the uh, college preparation class. Okay. And what he's been working on with the kids um, are interviewing skills. Jared is reviewing a lesson with his new assistant principal. Is this teaching? Is this teaching? Yes. It's modeling. Mm. So that, and that's what I'm asking. What moves or what elements make it teach? You say it's, it's a part of teaching because he's modeling and showing them what it is that is expected. Um, he's doing all the talking though. He's getting a little bit from the students and he's practicing with one, with one student, but they need to get out and get going. Language. Some of Jared's feedback sessions are more extreme. The, the video analysis piece, we do what you and I just did, mm -hmm. whole group. Okay. It's on that screen. Ooh. Oh yeah, Ooh. oh yeah. So then I will give him his video and give him my pre-feedback so okay. that he doesn't get Beforehand. hit. Okay. But at the same time, 15 more people are going to see different things. Correct. On Monday, we're going to break down in small groups. It's the hot seat. Um, and then people can get some real feedback. With over half of all black males failing to complete high school, a major barrier to leadership is the lack of college-educated black males in the system. Urban Prep Charter Academy's target is to get 100% of its students to complete college. All the students are boys, all are African-American, and 85% come from single-parent households. We believe in ourselves, we believe in each other, we believe in Urban Prep, we believe. 90% of the teachers and all the school leaders are African-American men. 
we wanted to make sure that within the school context, there were many models and examples of excellence and positivity among uh, the teachers and staff members that the students interacted with. And so a part of that had to be uh, making sure that we had African-American males, folks that looked like the students within the school. It's really hard to be something that you've never seen. And you grew up in a household where your father's not around and you haven't had these positive role models. I mean, the only role models you have are the guy on the corner selling drugs or the hip hop artist on the video or the basketball star, then guess what? You're gonna aspire to be the guy on the street selling drugs, the hip hop artist or the basketball star. We have to provide these students with other options of what can uh, be a successful life. The students have one outstanding role model. President Obama was hugely supportive of the founding of Urban Prep. We took a group of students to Springfield to see President Obama actually announced that he was running for president, and we took a group of students to the inauguration. Um, CNN actually dubbed us the Little Obamas, which really is um, inspiring. These students have bigger problems than Obama had to face. This area is notorious. As of last night, we had four more murders around the school area. And it's, for me, really hard because now you have to work your way around what actually exists in this neighborhood to move towards academic excellence. Because when you have the majority of people around you who really don't care about their lives and their futures, then it's kind of hard to surpass them because they're always pulling you down. So for me, just seeing from day-to-day -day things of people getting jumped on to people fighting to me having to resist fights, many times having to run from fights and just many other things so that I can actually live another day because to tell the truth in this community, it's all about life and death. Every situation that you get in is about life and death. Today we're gonna uh, talk just a little bit about the application timeline and what your senior year is gonna look like. The barriers to completing high school, let alone college, are more than academic. The school's culture is crucial to this. All students belong to a pride, a group headed by a teacher which meets every day. Matt. Good to see you, brother. Because like a lot of times your brother or your friend don't want to do something like, say, for instance, like come to class or come to school, and you probably, you know, you probably not going to, you probably going to feel the same way, but somebody got to step up and be like the leader. I feel that we can connect to the students in the school, like we can connect with them a little bit closer than maybe the teachers can, because we're in the same, we're in the same age bracket and we're all growing together. Oh, those are real powerful things, real powerful man. Y'all got me proud of it. <laughs> All right, very good. Me personally, I am those students. I just have a few years on them, you know, more than I can to remember, but I have, you know, those experiences. I've been through those. I see myself in my students. So in that, I'm, I share those stories and those personal, and, and try to cultivate those personal relationships so that it's not just I'm imparting this, I guess, you know, knowledge in terms of how it is to be, to be able to get to college on the academic level, but some of the things to kind of help them navigate their neighborhoods, their families, and some similar experiences. So they're not just saying, oh, well, he's black, you know, I can make it too. Okay, what are some of the things necessary in order to me to get successful? I've had problems at home. How did you, how did you navigate some of those problems at home? These things can often be uh, hindrances to their own development and stumbling blocks, and we want to be very, very deliberate about meeting those needs and addressing those issues so that they can be successful in college. We see those people as mentors that look like just like us. So, you, you know, we know that they've grown up just like us. Um, it's like seeing, it's like them seeing us walking in their shoes or, you know, or vice versa. In the streets, like a regular high school, you have, you have teachers that they just do, they come, do what they get paid to do. And at Urban Prep, you have teachers that have suits and come to school with suits and uh, have ha, uh, education and that, want, that makes you like, want to be like them and has you want to go to college and do and become teachers and professionals like they do. In grammar school, it was pretty much, I was thinking about 
um, you know, graduating high school and getting some type of job at McDonald's or something like that. Well, now, you know, college would have ran through your mind a couple of times, but you really didn't think you would make it because in grammar school, you don't have teachers who tell you every day, you know, you're going to college. It's like, well, if you go to college, you don't. That's kind of the mentality of them. Well, now it's changed to the point where college has no doubt in my mind that I'm going, that I'm going to pursue a professional career and that I'm going to succeed in life. It's the annual Mother's Day prom at Urban Prep. The school has yet to see how many students complete college, but across the city, outstanding black and Hispanic leaders are achieving results. With more black college graduates, the problem of underrepresentation should gradually disappear. There's incredible strength living in every schoolhouse, at least in my view, in America. It's not whether the people and the talent exists, it's whether you've got the will to, and the, and the willingness to go and find it and then build the supports to make that talent open its wings. Many people that you see who have committed to becoming extraordinary principals are committed to creating excellent environments for young people and many of them have faced those similar obstacles. And so they are passionate, they are driven, and it is a mission. This is definitely what I was born to do. It's absolutely the work that I would do for free. Um, I'd show up every day just because. <laughs>